हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ फोर्थ चैप्टर ऑफ योर अकाउंटेंसी बुक वन द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज रिकॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ अ पार्टनरशिप फर्म रिटायरमेंट और डेथ ऑफ अ पार्टनर इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट रिटायरमेंट और डेथ मीन्स वी बेसिकली फोकस्ड ऑन रिटायरमेंट एंड वी टॉक्ड अबाउट द थिंग्स दैट अ पार्टनर गेट्स वेन ही और शी रिटायर्स फ्रॉम द फर्म एंड ऑल्सो what does the partner have to give back to the firm at the time of retirement we made a list of things that need treatment in the accounting books of the firm at the time of retirement those were calculation of new profit sharing ratio or the gaining ratio ascertainment of gain or loss on revaluation of assets and liabilities treatment of goodwill adjustment of accumulated profits and losses or reserves adjustment of capitals and preparation of the balance sheet these are the things that are going to be there in this chapter for you and out of these in the first part we learned how to calculate the gaining ratio or the new profit sharing ratio at the time of retirement we also saw how to treat the goodwill which is valued for retirement whenever the partner retires the goodwill of the firm is valued or we can say it is revalued this newly valued goodwill needs to be treated how do we treat it we find out the share of the retiring partner out of this goodwill and we give it to that partner but this goodwill share is given to the retiring partner by the gaining partners so we need to first have the gaining ratio so that we can debit the gaining partners and credit the retiring partner with his or her share of the goodwill in the first case that we did for goodwill we assumed that there was no existing goodwill in the books today we'll begin or resume the lecture by assuming that what if there was already a goodwill so let us take a look at the scenario and a related example in case there is an existing goodwill which is appearing in the books we first of all have to write it off and how do we write off the existing goodwill we have already done it in the previous chapter we write off the goodwill by debiting all the partners in their old ratio and crediting the goodwill account the logic is very simple goodwill is an asset which is appearing in the balance sheet on the asset side of course so since it's an asset it is being written off or it is being removed from the books an asset being removed or reduced or written off has to be credited that is what you've learned in the rules for journaling so you credit the asset which is goodwill and you debit the partners so after writing of this existing goodwill we'll do the same thing with the new goodwill that we did in the previous class let us take a look at the related example for this scenario in our example we have hany pammy and sunny as partners sharing profits in the ratio of 3 2 and 1 this is their profit sharing ratio goodwill appearing in the books is valued at 60000 so this is the old goodwill or existing goodwill as we say pammy retires and at the time of retirement goodwill is valued at 84000 we can call it the new goodwill so the old goodwill is 60000 the new goodwill is 84000 hany and sunny decided to share the future profits in the ratio of 2 is to 1 so we have the new profit sharing ratio we have to pass the journal entries revisit the question we have the old ratio of the partners which is 3 to 1 we have the old goodwill which is 60000 we have the new goodwill which is 84000 and we have the new ratio which is 2 is to 1 now the first thing that we have to do is to write off the old goodwill in the old ratio by debiting all the partners in their old ratio which is 3 to 1 and crediting the goodwill account with its full value thereafter we have to give the retiring partner his or her share of the new goodwill so first of all we find out the share of pammy 
the goodwill of the firm is 84,000. PAMI's share was 2 by 6, which comes down to 1 by 3. So, one third of goodwill 84,000 comes out to be 28,000, which is PAMI's share. Now, this share will be given to PAMI by the gaining partners in their gaining ratio. So, we have to calculate the gaining ratio now, which is very simple. Subtract the old share from the new share. When we do this, we get Hani's share as 1 by 6 and Sunny's share as 1 by 6 too, which means their gaining shares are equal, which is 1 is to 1, which means that this 28,000 will be given to PAMI by Hani and Sunny equally, which is 14 and 14,000. So, we debit Hani and Sunny by 14, 14,000 and we credit PAMI by 28,000. So, this is what we do when there is an existing goodwill. We first write off that goodwill and then we make the entry for the newly valued goodwill. Now, sometimes there might be a case when we are not given the amount of goodwill explicitly, which is a case where the goodwill might be hidden as we have done in the previous chapter also. But in this chapter, hidden goodwill is pretty simple. Hidden goodwill means the amount of goodwill which is not given to you explicitly, but you can find it out. How do you find it out in case of retirement? In case of retirement, when the payment to the retiring partner is made in a lump sum amount, then what you have to do is that compare this amount with the amount which was due to be paid to the retiring partner. If this amount is more than what was due to the retiring partner, that means that the excess is goodwill. Let us see what is written here. The amount paid to the retiring partner in excess of what is due to him based on the balance of his capital account after all the adjustments is actually nothing but the hidden goodwill. So, you just have to compare what we are paying to the retiring partner and what was due to the retiring partner and the difference will be the goodwill. Let us look at an example. P, Q and R are partners sharing profits in the ratio of 3 to 1. R retires and the balance in his capital account after making all the adjustments uh, is 60,000. But P and Q agreed to pay him 75,000. So, students, it is very simple. The balance due to him was 60, but he is being paid 75. This extra 15,000 is obviously the goodwill that we are paying to the partner. So, now this 15,000 which is being paid to the retiring partner will be treated in the same manner because it is the goodwill that we are paying to the partner. So, we will credit the retiring partner and we will debit the gaining partners. Now, assuming that the ratio remains the same, so, we will assume that 3 2 was the ratio of the remaining partners, which becomes their gaining ratio also. So, we will debit the gaining partners in 3 is to 2 and we will credit the retiring partner by paying him the entire amount of his goodwill and the gaining partners will be debited with the respective amounts. So, this is how we treat goodwill. We have done all the cases related to goodwill, be it existing goodwill or without the existing goodwill or be it the case when there is no clear information about the goodwill. I hope you were able to understand how do we treat goodwill on retirement of a partner. Now, let us move on to the next very, very important topic. The next topic is adjustment for revaluation of assets and liabilities. As you have already seen in the previous chapter, whenever there is reconstitution of partnership, the firm or the partners decide to revalue their assets or reassess their liabilities so that they can bring them to the current values so that whatever gain or loss comes out from this revaluation can be properly treated. The proper treatment of this gain and loss is that all the old or existing partners before the reconstitution are entitled to the gain or are liable to suffer the loss due to revaluation. So, whenever we do revaluation, we have to prepare a account, an account which is the revaluation account. What do we do in the revaluation account is that on the credit side, 
we write all those changes in the assets and liabilities that are beneficial for the firm which means either an increase in the assets or a decrease in the liabilities or whenever we find an unrecorded asset so all these things that actually lead to a benefit are credited to this account and all those things which are opposite to these things like increase in liabilities or decrease in assets or finding an unrecorded liability these things are debited to the revaluation account after debiting and crediting the changes in assets and liabilities we find out the gain or the loss by balancing out the account so there are entries that we have to pass for these particular items that we show on the revaluation account we've already learned these entries in the, pre in the previous chapter let us take a look at them again in this chapter 2 whenever there is an increase in the value of an asset as we already saw we show it on the credit side of the revaluation account so we credit the revaluation account when we debit the respective asset account similarly whenever there is a reduction in the value of an asset we debit the revaluation account when we credit the asset account whenever there is an appreciation in a liability a liability increases we debit the revaluation and credit that particular liability whenever there is a reduction in a liability we credit the revaluation account because it's a benefit for us because the liability is getting reduced so we debit that liability and we credit the revaluation account whenever we find out an unrecorded asset it is a benefit for us so we credit the revaluation account and we debit the assets name whenever there is an unrecorded liability it's a kind of a loss for us so we debit the revaluation account and we credit that particular liability sometimes there might be an expense incurred for revaluing the assets and liabilities that expense is debited to revaluation account and credited to the cash or bank account if the firm is paying that if the firm is paying the expense through its cash or bank account then we credit the cash or bank account if a partner is paying that expense then we credit the partner's account thereafter having done all these adjustments and entries we find out the gain or the loss if there is a gain we show it on the debit side of the revaluation account so we debit the revaluation and credit the partners individually one by one in their old ratio and if there is a loss we do it on the opposite side by crediting the revaluation account right so these are the entries that we have to make or pass for adjustment or revaluation of assets and liabilities let us understand or strengthen our understanding with the help of an example in this question mitali indu and gita are partners they are sharing their profits and losses in the ratio of 532 we have these assets we have these liabilities here you can take a look at them what happens in the question is that geeta retires and it was agreed now you have to pay attention to the adjustments given below the balance sheet or the main question because these are the adjustments that are going to give you the amounts that you have to show in revaluation account these adjustments will tell you what changes have taken place in assets or liabilities so the first adjustment says that machine is to be valued at 140000 it is to be valued at 140000 valuing it at 140000 means what the machine was already existing at 150 now we have to value it at 140 this means the value of the machine has gone down it has reduced it is a loss for us it will go to the debit side of the revaluation account patents are to be valued at 40000 patents were earlier for 30000 which means the value of patents has increased so that will go to the credit side of revaluation account then buildings at 125 buildings were at 1 lakh earlier the value of buildings have also increased so we have to record these and prepare the revaluation account so now let us look at our revaluation account since patents and buildings had increased we show them on the credit side and since machinery had reduced we show the change on the debit side remember you only have to show the change the amount by which the assets or the liabilities have changed after showing them 
you find their difference if this side is more this is the side which is uh, basically showing the benefits so if this side side is more and this is less that shows the firm has gained because of revaluation this gain will be transferred to all the partners we don't care who is retiring or who is getting admitted as we did in the previous chapter revaluation whether it is a gain or a loss goes to all the partners right all the existing partners in their old ratio what was the old ratio in this question the old ratio was 532 so the gain of 25000 which we obtained by subtracting the total of that side with this side this gain will be given to all these partners in their ratio which is 532 having done this let us look at their journal entries also machine reduced so we debited the revaluation account buildings and patents appreciated so we credited the revaluation account and the gain was debited to revaluation account while credited to the partners account that is what we did in the revaluation account and that is how we prepare the revaluation account i hope you were able to understand this as well now let us move on to the next step the next step is making adjustments for accumulated profits and losses or you can also call them reserves so you have to make adjustments for the reserves or for the accumulated profits or losses existing in the firm's accounts or the books or the balance sheet so what do we do with the profits and losses usually the profits and losses or the reserves are written off how do you write them off reserves remember are liabilities because you show them on the liability side of the balance sheet they are liabilities because the firm instead of paying the profits to the partners decided to save them so basically those reserves are firm's liabilities towards the partners right so since they are liabilities on being written off they are to be debited while all the partners remember all the partners all the partners in the previous firm before the reconstitution they all are entitled to these reserves or the profits right so you debit the reserves since it is a liability you credit all the partners in their capital accounts in their old ratio individually when there are losses you do the reverse you debit the partners and you credit the respective losses like the pnl account right so this is what you usually do for most of the reserves in the previous chapter we have also talked about workman compensation reserve or fund and the investment fluctuation reserve or fund i hope you remember that you might get those reserves also in these questions right more or less the general rule is that you write off the reserves or accumulated profits and losses how do you do them if they were appearing on the liability side of the balance sheet you debit them and credit all the partners in their old ratio and if they were appearing on the asset side like the advertisement suspense account or the pnl account you credit them and debit the partners right now having done all of this what have all we done till now we have calculated the gaining ratio we have calculated the goodwill share which is to be given to the retiring partner we have also seen that we uh, have to give the old goodwill also to all the partners including the retiring partner we have to revalue the assets and liabilities and the gain or loss has to be also debited or credited to the retiring partner also along with all the partners and even the accumulated losses profits or reserves have to be written off among all of them so having made adjustments for all of this now we calculate the total amount which is due to the retiring partner and after having done that we have to make the payment to the retiring partner how do we do that in terms of journal entries there there can be different scenarios if we are making the entire payment in cash or lump sum at one go then we have to credit our cash or bank account and debit the retiring partner we might not pay the partner right now we might want to pay him later so we convert the dues of that partner into his loan because we have to close his capital account he is not a partner anymore so we debit the capital account 
and we transfer that amount to his loan account. And there can be another scenario where we make certain payments and we transfer the rest of the amount to the loan account. In that case, we will combine the entries. We debit the partner, we credit the cash for that amount which we are paying to that partner and for the amount that we are not paying right now, we credit the partner's loan account. Right? This, that is how you make the payment or you make the you know, due payment to the partner on his retirement. You dispose of the amount. Right? Now, let us take a look at another scenario which might happen sometimes that whenever we transfer the retiring partner's amount to his loan account, the firm might also decide to pay interest on the loan which is usually the case, right? So, we usually pay interest on loan of that retiring partner's loan amount. So, how do we make entries for that? We debit the interest account because obviously it is an expense for us and we credit the retiring partner's loan account which means that this interest gets added to the amount of loan which is already due to be paid. And then when we make the payment, we debit the loan account and we credit the cash or bank account. So, you first debit the interest account showing that interest has been due, it has been added to the loan account and then you make the payment of the loan account or the amount due in the loan account. So, now students you have seen how do we make the payment to the retiring partner, what do we do with the interest due to the retiring partner and how do we finally repay or pay his loan which is due. Right? So, having learnt all these small, small things that are to be done when a partner is getting retired, now we have to prepare ourselves for good comprehensive questions. In the next part, we will discuss a couple of very good questions that will summarize your understanding of retirement of a partner. So, I wish that all of you when you join the next video, the next part, you come prepared with all these concepts so that you are ready to do two good questions. This was it from today's video. I hope you were able to understand it thoroughly. Thank you.